I was inspired to write this when it was reported that dolphins and swans had returned to the canals in Venice. How amazing, I thought. Unfortunately, this was later found to be fake news. The dolphins were in fact filmed 750 kilometers away in Sardinia, and the swans are regularly seen in the canals. There has, however, been a change in the canals in Venice. The water in them is now clear, and the cormorants have returned to catch fish, as they can now see the fish to do so. This is because there are no motorboats moving around and churning up the sediment. A couple of quirky stories have also emerged in the UK. One is about a herd of 122 wild Kashmiri goats that live on the Grey Torm in Wales. In bad weather they will venture down into the town of Llandudno, but as the streets are free of many people and traffic, they've come into the town to have a look at what is going on. They have been eating flowers and hedges and providing some entertainment for the residents. The other story is of deer which have been seen in an East London neighbourhood. Again, they are just hanging out, eating and enjoying the peace and quiet. There have also been stories from other parts of the world about animals coming into our towns and cities. Puffins have been seen in the Calanc National Park, which is situated in the Mediterranean near Marseille. They would normally stay on the small protected islands, but as walking, swimming and boating has been banned, they are venturing further afield. In the Chilean city of Santiago, two pumas have been seen wandering the streets. They had to be darted with tranquilizer and then released back into the wilderness. Experts say they are making the most of the empty streets, exploring and searching for food. My favourite story is of killer whales being sighted in Vancouver Harbour. There is a remarkable video clip of two of them swimming at the floating seaplane terminal. Normally the terminal would be very busy, as would the harbour in general due to all the boat traffic but with hardly any boats moving and no seaplanes taking off, it is nice and peaceful for the whales to venture in. Killer whales have also been spotted up the Indian Arm, a saltwater fjord which is adjacent to the city of Vancouver. The North Vancouver councillor, Jim Hansen, said it is the first time in 59 years that he has spotted them so far up the Indian Arm. There are also some examples of what happens when people stop feeding wild animals. In Nara Park, Japan, there are many sika deer, which rely on tourists feeding them rice crackers. Since there are no tourists, the deer have taken to wandering the streets looking for food. There is a similar case in Bangkok. In the Lok Bori municipality, there are thousands of macaque monkeys. There are two rival gangs, the temple macaques and the city macaques, that live in different areas and are separated by the northern train track. They don't normally encroach upon each other's territories, but food is scarce. Usually, the many tourists that visit the area feed the macaques or have food stolen from them, but there are no tourists. The temple macaques invaded the city macaques' territory searching for food in a market, but the city macaques fought back. The fight that ensued was brutal and the locals were quite astonished. They're used to seeing the macaques having small scraps, but nothing on such a large scale. There are also other, more serious consequences to the lack of tourists around the world. Unfortunately, the lockdown is not good news for all animals. I had hoped to keep this very much a happy video, but having found out the following, I felt that it was something that needed to be mentioned. In Africa, where ecotourism plays a huge part in the funding of conservation efforts, there is no money coming in for the wages of security guards who protect the animals. The regional managing director for the Nature Conservancy is concerned that the last 10 years of good conservation will be lost. There have been at least nine rhinos poached in South Africa's northwest province since the lockdown started on March the 23rd. The rise in poaching occurred in tourist hotspots that until now were considered relatively safe havens for wildlife as there were usually too many people around for poachers to carry out their gruesome work. There is great concern that if the lockdown continues for months then even more people will lose their jobs with dire consequences to their families but also there will be an onslaught of poaching of rhinos, elephants and other iconic animals. It is also feared that there will be an increase in poaching for bushmeat as families starve due to a lack of wages coming in. On a happier note, other examples from the UK of how the behaviour of wildlife is changing include moles that have been seen above ground hunting for worms, badgers have been seen taking a nap above ground in the lovely sunshine we are having, and I have also heard of a seal on a nearby beach enjoying the sun. It is not a place where you would normally find a seal hauled up. The wardens at Holcombe Nature Reserve in Norfolk have noticed more sparrow hawks, stoat and deer. The wardens believe that the greatest impact will be on the nesting shorebirds such as oyster catchers, sandwich terns and the endangered ringed plover. 
As no people or dogs are walking on the beach, these nests will have minimal disturbance and populations should rise. It is also hoped that as there is much less traffic on the roads, our sweet little hedgehogs, who are coming out of hibernation, will have less chance of being hit by passing cars. As their numbers are in decline, this would be a real bonus. It is also thought that wildflowers are going to benefit from the lockdown. I have noticed myself that a grassy area somewhere where I am able to walk is full of daisies as the grass has not been cut. Likewise, the verges on our rural roads have not been cut. This is partly due to staff shortages, but also having to redirect money into more urgent areas. The consequence of this is that people who are able to walk these quiet roads are noticing more plant life, and that by the summer, if they remain uncut, they will be an abundance of summer flowers. What a lovely thought to look forward to. And it is not just the flowers that will benefit, but also the bees, butterflies, birds, bats and insects that depend on them for survival. I would love to hear of any other stories from around the world of the benefits to your local wildlife lockdown is having, so please send me a message. The changes in behaviour of our wildlife are not the only differences that have been noticed. Our air quality, particularly over cities, has seen a dramatic change. For example, in New York City, on a couple of days during March, emissions of carbon monoxide had fallen by around 50%. This was attributed to less cars and trucks moving, with a decrease of around 35%. Scientists also found a 5-10% to reduction in carbon dioxide over the city. NASA satellite images have revealed a reduction in nitrogen dioxide levels over northeastern USA. Nitrogen dioxide is released when fossil fuels are burnt. A huge contributor is burning fuel in cars. Data goes back as far as 2005, and for March 2020, it is showing a mean drop of 30% when compared with March mean of 2015 to 2019. Cities in China went into lockdown as millions were travelling for the Chinese New Year. Scientists have analysed data for the two-week period following the Chinese New Year and found a 25% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions compared to the same two-week period after Chinese New Year in 2019. This amounts to approximately 100 megatons of carbon dioxide or 6% of global emissions over the same period. Likewise, the amount of nitrogen dioxide found in the air also decreased, and in the week after the 2020 Chinese New Year holiday, average levels of nitrogen dioxide were 36% lower over China than in the same period in 2019. As impressive as this sounds, it will only reduce annual figures of carbon dioxide emissions by around 1%. Northern Italy has also seen a significant fall in nitrogen dioxide, and there is a similar story in India. In northern India, in the state of Punjab, the Himalayas, which are around 125 miles away, can be seen due to the air being cleaner. This is apparently the first time in 30 years that this has happened. New Delhi, which is India's capital, has seen a fall of 71% in nitrogen dioxide levels. There is also data on PM2.5, which is microscopic particulate matter smaller than 2.5 micrometers in diameter. PM2.5 can lodge into the lungs and pass into the bloodstream, causing serious health problems. The World Health Organization considers anything above 25 to be unsafe. In New Delhi, levels of PM2.5 fell by 71% from 91 micrograms per cubic meter on March the 20th to 26 micrograms per cubic meter on March the 27th which is still above the safe limit recommended by the World Health Organization. But what an amazing reduction, and it could be even lower by now. There is also some data to suggest that in major cities in the UK, there is a similar pattern in the reduction of nitrogen dioxide levels and the amount of PM2.5. It will be a while yet before scientists have a full set of data to analyse and for their findings to be published, but it is going to make very interesting reading. How much of a benefit in terms of a reduction in air pollution and global warming gases the lockdown has given us depends on how long the lockdown lasts for each country, but also how our governments choose to re-stimulate our economies. Some scientists are concerned that there will be a spike in emissions, so mitigating any benefits that have occurred. There is an opportunity here for governments to make our world less polluted and reduce our global warming gas emissions, but it is also down to us can this new way of working from home continue, at least for some of us, some of the time? Do we need to make that road journey or a flight to meet face-to-face -face with a client or business partner, or could it be done online? 
What our world looks like in a year's time could be very different in a positive way if we and our governments make the right choices as we emerge from our homes.